Uh, good morning again, everyone. Morning, welcome. Um, <clears throat> again, as as usual, we'll with we'll short breathing exercise to quiet our mind. Again, try to make yourself relax, comfortable as much as you can. Let go of any stiffness, tension in your body. And let go of all thoughts of past and futures. And try to keep your attention on the breath. And watching it mindfully. And being aware when you are breathing in, being aware you are breathing in. And when you are breathing out, being aware you are breathing out. <clears throat> Simply just observing mindfully and being aware. If your mind <clears throat> get distracted or wander off, you can always catch and be, bring back your attention to the breath anytime, all the time.
then we can try to have good intention motivation for being here. And we can try to reflect, contemplate. <clears throat> How important it is our state of mind. Whether our life become happy life or unhappy life. It much, so much depend on our state of mind. More than anything else. We can have a good physical comfort, good physical health. Externally, everything quite well, good. But if our mind is not happy, disturbed, agitated, for whatever reason, we can end up becoming very unhappy. Our life can become very unhappy, miserable. On the other hand, we might have physical challenges. We might have other challenges, external challenges. But if we can keep our mind positive, calm, and happy, despite all those external challenges, our life can be quite happy, quite meaningful. Therefore, it is quite clear that the importance of keeping our mind calm, peaceful, and positive and happy in all the time, in every situation. And to be able to reach that point where we can keep our mind calm, positive, happy, no matter what happens externally, it requires practice, meditation, practice over the time. And in order to meditate practice, continually, consistently, we have to be reminded and encouraged, inspired again and again. And for that purpose, with that hope that we have gathered here, so we are reminded the importance of that. And so after being reminded, we can try to meditate practice as much as possible in our everyday life.
And if our mind is peaceful, calm, happy, we will be able to be more health benefit to others. Even when we are unable to help and benefit them, others directly, at least we will not harm others much. On the other hand, if our mind is very unhappy, disturbed, miserable, not only we are unhappy, we tend to, in such situation, we tend to hurt and harm others more. with our thoughts and actions. And may us here coming together to listen and to engage in a discussion, reflection, contemplations. May all this become cause and conditions, we achieve our highest potential, a fully awakened state. So we can be greatest help and benefit to oneself and to all sentient beings. Refuge in Bodhicitta, once in English, twice in Tibetan. I go from until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merits I through listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. Sange Chodan Soki Chonamba Chanchu Bardu Dagni Kapsu Chi Dagi Chonen Gepe Sonam Gi Jola Penshir Sange Trupar Sho Sange Chodan Soki Chonamba Chanchu Bardu Dagni Kapsu Chi Dagi chonen gepe sonam hi drola penche sange drupar show. So <clears throat> for the last few weeks, uh, we have been discussing on one particular topic, subjects, the 12 dependent arising or link. And with that, we, we kind of discuss, you know, how due to our own ignorance, um, then we engage into, uh, from the link of the ignorance, then we engage into creating contaminated actions or karma. And having engaged into such contaminated actions or karma, the second link, then the moment we create that actions, that karmic imprint or potential or karmic seed is planted in the consciousness or mind stream, the third link. And then when the time comes, 
sudden cause and condition arises, then that karmic seed that is planted in the mind stream is activated. And being having activated that karmic seed potential within the consciousness, then you know um, it produces uh, a new rebirth. You know, and so therefore, then the moment you have the new rebirth, the moment that you have the conceptions when that happened in regard to the new life, new rebirth, and uh, that is when the starting of the new body, beginning of the new body, the form, and uh, you know, uh, the mental consciousness. So name and form, the next link is produced. And the, from the very moment of that conceptions, you know, over the days, weeks, months, the sense faculties are developed. So through name and form, then the, the sense faculty, the link of sense faculty is produced. So over the days, weeks, months, then those sense faculties are um, developed. When the sense faculties are fully developed, then there is the objects, there's a consciousness, and there's a sense faculty. And then the consciousness through the um, through the support of the sense faculties, then the consciousness is able to contact the objects. You know, the consciousness is able to get in touch with the objects. So, in terms of form, whatever shape, whatever color, you know. Our eye consciousness is able to get in contact or in touch with that shape and color through the eye sense faculties, you know. And then through the sense faculties, the link of the sense faculty, you know, the link, uh, the next link of contact, contact is developed. And one of the functioning of the contact is when you're, you know, on the link of the contact is then, you know, to distinguish or, or discriminate or um, identify uh, objects as something pleasant, unpleasant, neutral object as good, bad, in between. So that is what, you know, your consciousness get in touch with the objects. And then once you get in that, in touch with the objects, then the contact, the functioning, or the functioning of that mind, the contact mind, is then to distinguishing, you know, the, these objects as a nice, or not nice, bad, or neutral, so so, you know, pleasant, unpleasant, you know, attractive, unattractive, so that. So that is the functioning also part of the conduct, you know. Um, so I think we discuss up to up to that link last week. We talk about uh, up to the conduct, you know. Um,
The next link is the feeling. You no know, feeling, sensations, you know, whatever, um, different translations. Um, so through the contact with the objects, coming in, the op coming in contact with the objects, um, coming in touch with the objects, and then receiving or distinguishing the objects in those different categories. On the basis of that, then you, you, you have a different, we generate different feelings according to that. When you come in contact with one object and when that, having come in contact with that object, our mind perceive or distinguish or interpret it or discriminate it as a something good, positive, cool, you know, pleasant, nice, um, attractive, based on such different interpretations, distinguishing, then the way we feel in relation to that objects, then you have pleasant feelings towards that objects. When you come in contact with that objects, then you have a nice feeling, good feeling, positive feeling. You know, and so that good feeling, positive feeling, um, nice feeling is what the feeling of happiness, having a feeling of joy, you know, feeling of something pleasant. On the other hand, when we come in contact with the object, then your this mind of the contact distinguish or perceive or interpret it, that object as something bad, um, unnice, you know, or not good, you know, horrible, unpleasant, unattractive, unnice, so on, so on. Then on the basis of that, then we have, uh, when you come in contact with that object, then you have different feelings, you know, unpleasant feeling, unnice feeling, you know. That unnice, unpleasant, you know, um, not good feelings, you know, um, so that is, you know, a feeling of suffering, you know, and that produces the feeling of suffering, you know, the feeling of suffering. And sometimes we distinguish the object neither as a good or bad. Neither we uh, see it as attractive, unattractive, neither pleasant, unpleasant, neither good or bad, more kind of neutral. You know, we perceive the object more as a neutral. We distinguish it more as a neutral. We identify it as a more neutral. We discriminate the object as more as neutral. On the basis of that, also the, our feeling in relation to that object is more neutral. You know, neither you get you know, unpleasant feeling, neither you get pleasant feelings. You know, neither you are very excited, neither you feel bad about it. You know, it's more neutral feelings. So we have those three kinds of feelings, generally three, a different, a three different feelings. It is, it is a pleasant, joyful, happy feelings, unpleasant, you know, painful or suffering feelings or more neutral feeling in between. And those three different feelings come because of our mind identifying or distinguishing or perceiving, um, 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 interpreting the object differently, which the contact, the mind of the contact does that.
That is how the link of contact lead to the link of the feelings. That is how the feeling arises, those different feelings arises. Mm. And of course, also we can say there is a physical feeling and mental feelings, you know, uh, um, physical sensory feelings related with, uh, you know, bodily or as well as mental feelings, but um, and within whatever, whether it's a physical sensations, feeling or mental feelings, again, you know, either is a good feeling or bad feeling or neutral feelings. So then next, once we have that feeling, the, the link of the feeling then leads or produce the next link that is the craving or attachments. Craving or attachments. And of course, in order for that feeling, the link of feeling to produce craving or attachment, then the ignorance play a role, you know, if you have no, if you don't have ignorance, if you don't have the delusions, of course, you can still have feeling, but it doesn't produce craving or attachments. The arhat could have feelings. The Buddha can have a feeling, but that doesn't produce the craving or attachments that it does for us. Okay? Because we still have not overcome the delusions. We still have the ignorance and the delusions. And when you are not overcome the delusions and the ignorance, and then we come in the contact of object and through coming in contact of object, when we have different feelings that produce a craving or attachments. So when you have nice feeling, present feelings, happy feeling, joyful feelings, we don't want to lose that. We don't want to lose that. We want to have that feeling all the time. You know, we want to hold on that, not wanting to lose it, you know, not wanting to be separated from that feeling, wanting to hold on that feeling Wanting to have that feeling all the time is the craving for that feelings, craving for that attachments. On the other hand, you know, when we have unpleasant feeling, painful, suffering feeling, painful or suffering, unpleasant feeling, you know, we want to separate from it. We want to get rid of it. We don't want to experience that. And then there is the attachment or craving to get rid of it. There's attachment and craving, not wanting to encounter that. You know? One is, the first one is the attachment and craving we have it and not wanting to lose it, wanting to hold on that. This is a craving that you don't want, craving for not wanting to have that feelings. You know, cra craving or attachment, wanting to get rid of or suffer from that feeling. And then if it's more neutral feelings, you know, you don't want, even though you are not attached to it, you don't want it, uh, uh, no, same level, but you don't want it to decline. You don't want that neutral feeling to decline and become an unpleasant feeling, painful feelings, you know. 
And so there is, again, craving attachment, not wanting to decline that neutral feeling and transform into something unpleasant feeling. So that is where those hitting feelings produce craving or attachments. Again, as I mentioned, we are talking about for those beings, you know, um, who still are not free from the delusions. You know, if someone who is free from the delusions and ignorance and delusions, then that feeling does not produce the craving or, or that. Also, when you talk about attachment and craving, you know, the Buddha explained, you know, there are six types of attachment, you know, attachment to the, the five sense objects, you know, the attachment to the, the object of, you know, um, eye consciousness, which, which is like form, shape, colors, you know, attachment to the sound, you know, air call, uh, sound, you know, attachment and craving for the uh, smells, you know, taste, touch, you know, then attachment to the views, ideas. So it is not just attachment to something physical. Those five sense objects are more physical. But sometimes we can get attached to something abstract, such as view ideas. Sometimes we might not be so attached to the, uh, to the sense objects, but we can get very attached to your view. And a lot of time, all the conflict between different religious or scholars, or intellectuals. The conflicts, the fight, on the views, ideas, and sometimes those are much more worse, you know. Sometimes that is much more destructive, much more harmful the destruction that it does um, to one's and to others. Sometimes we are attached to, you know, our view of everything's the view of our ethic, moral view on our political views in every different department, you know, in terms of economic views, you know. Um, and then definitely, you know, um, spiritual, spiritual views, you know, and of war are being fought on that basis. You know, um, we hold on our view and we are so attached to that, we feel this is, this is right and this is the best for everyone. And we try to force other to 
do that just because we believe that is the best and we're attached to that. It might be best for you, it might not be best for everyone. Something that is best for you doesn't mean it is best for everyone. But a lot of time, the problem with us is that, you know, because it was best for you or because you feel that is the best, and you try to force others to, uh, and that is where the problem comes. When you try to force someone, when other does not find some way that you find. You believe that is the best, the other person doesn't believe that is the best. You find that is the best, other person doesn't find that is the best. Whether on individual level or as a society, as a country, society, something that one particular society find most beneficial help, the other society might not find that same way. So, therefore, on the basis of that, you cannot force others to do, accept and do that. And, but it happens a lot. It happens a lot. Because we are so attached because we are so attached to our belief, our view, our ideas. Hmm? Then, Yeah. And it is never helpful when someone force someone. Uh, even maybe sometimes the intention is the good. Uh, you can inspire someone, you can encourage someone, but you cannot force, you know. Uh, the more you try to force this, the more resistant there is. So the more you are able to help, the more you are unable to help. The more you are able to help, the more you are... You, you hurt the other persons or uh, uh, society or countries because you are trying to force them which they don't want or they are not ready. And, and if you keep on trying to force them, it slowly, slowly creates more and more resistance and more and more stronger negative feelings more and more pushing away from that, you know. Um, but a lot of time, we sometimes it's the best, sometimes it might be with a good intention, sometimes it's not with a good intention, but whatever, because we believe in something, some ideas, some views, and then we become very attached to that view, you know. And then that is when we started to do that way. You know, then that is when we started to um, force someone. That has never helped in the past. That has not been Good example in the past, it is still not good example, it will continue not to be good when we try to force. Throughout the histories, we can see that. You know, um, from 
religious to another religion, from country to country, from society to society, from tribe to another tribe, from individual to another individuals. No, um, even between the friends, even between um, sibling, uh, even between parents and children, you know, we can try to inspire someone, we can try to encourage someone, but you cannot force others, you know, um, that doesn't have a positive impact. And um, but a lot of time that is the, the reason why we do is because we are very attached to that view and very much, you know, um, that attachment to that view is very much um, rooted in the ignorance, very much rooted in the ignorance. So the next, you know, the link of attachments lead to the next link, the link of grasping. So grasping is when the attachment or craving, when you have attachment or craving at the very beginning, if you apply the antidote, you will try to walk with that, you can kind of let it go quickly without holding and grasping on that. But when we don't apply the antidotes, when we don't try to put into practice and that craving attachment becomes stronger and stronger, you know, then it becomes very strong grasping, strong clinging, clinging to the objects, you know. Um, That is grasping. More higher level, more stronger, more intense level of that attachment become grasping. And in some in some teachers, they use analogy of you know um, craving is like a thief, you know, who want to steal something in the darkness. And the grasping is when the, someone got inside and got what they need to get it, you know, being able to hold of the objects, you know, craving like wanting to get a hold of that object that you, you are going to steal and kind of in ready to do that. And then and grasping is like then we are able to hold the object. So it is a strong grasping, a strong clinging to the objects. You know, um, strong grasping, clinging to the objects. And again, in terms of the grasping, again, you know, in some of the teachings, uh, many of the lambrims, again, they talk about four different kinds of grasping. Grasping to the in, um, sensual, so that object of sense, sense objects, as we already talked before, you know, like the form, you know, sound, smell, taste, and touch, the object of that, you know, being grasping to those, um, grasping to the wrong view, wrong ideas that we just talked about, you know. Um, not only not only views, but uh, um, and ideas. And then, you know, grasping to Ethic and mode of behavior, 
you know um so for example you know grasping to sudden that is relate a uh, sudden 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 form of ethic or mode of behavior that is related or link or related to you know wrong view or wrong ideas for example you know maybe um of course again we are talking from from Buddhist point of view, you know, when we talk about what's a wrong view, we can have different, uh, you know, from another religion point of view, you know, our could be wrong or wrong, you know, um, that is always object of point of view, you know, from what point of view uh, you look at it, you know, um, so from Buddhist point of view, you know, such as the ethic of sacrificing animals or other human beings or yourself as a way of achieving salvations, you know, as a moral ethic or moral discipline, the way to achieve salvations or nirvana or moksha, you know, and there are certain who believe that by sacrificing it is animal in the long in the past, sometimes even human beings, you know, um, and sometimes sacrificing themselves, you know, jumping into the fires themselves. And it is a uh, for them it is a um, it's a ethical discipline, and it is a uh, ethical discipline discipline or moral behavior that help them to achieve. You know, salvation or nirvana or mokshas, you know. And from Buddhist point of view, um, um, that is again, you know, uh, wrong, you know. And so, anyway, grasping to such, such ethic or, or such um, mode of behavior. And then grasping, you know, um, the sense of self and that is grasping to grasping to um, the self to exist inherently or truly existence you know which is the fundamental ignorance you know which is the fundamental ignorance that lead to other delusions and that lead to all our contaminated actions, and that lead to, you know, samsara and the suffering and the samsara. So that kind of four kind of um, so those are like uh, four kind of the graspings, you know, and so due to craving and graspings, um, so craving lead to the graspings. So craving and grasping can act when we have a strong craving and grasping that can act as a cause uh, to produce, you know, um, projecting or throwing karma, you know, that can that craving and grasping can act as a cause for us to create, you know, projecting or throwing karma, a complete karma, as we discussed before, you know, for the futures. At the same time, it also functions, 
you know, um, as an aggravating factors for the uh, karmic seed or past. So the craving and craving and grasping is like the conditions, like the water and the fertilizer, the heat that give potential for that seed to produce the result. So as we as we mentioned in the past, we have created a calm growing karmic seed or projecting karmic seed um, and having created that, that karmic potential or seed with our mental consciousness still, if it has not been purified, it is still there. But if it doesn't meet the condition, it will never produce the result. Even the seed is there, the potential is there, but it, it doesn't receive other condition that need for it to produce the result, it will never produce the samsara rebirth for them. Just like a seed that never gets water and other factors that it need to grow. The seed is there, but it can never produce the result as long if it doesn't get the if it doesn't get the conducive um, supporting conditions. In the same way, we might be carrying billions of growing karmic seed in our mental consciousness, but if it is not being activated by the craving and grasping, it, all of those seeds will never be able to produce the result. So therefore, even from that point of view, we can see if we can get rid of our craving, attachment, and grasping, even there is billions and billions of karmic seeds still not being purified, they will never be able to produce the result of some sort of birth because those seeds never get the water and other factors. So therefore, this especially when we talk about uh, this link, the eight, the eight link is uh, the craving, and nine is the grasping. Especially when you talk about that, then we are specifically more talking about at the time of death. At the time of death, you know. And so, um, therefore, um, is very much encouraged and advice, you know, and try to not to have attachments grasping at the time of death. Of course, throughout the life, if we have less attachment, less grasping, less craving, less attachment, you will be more happy, you know, more craving, more grasping, you know, generally, you know, it will lead you more unhappy, more dissatisfied. Um, and that, that is, we can look at our own experience, everyday experience, from small to big, you know, if I have craving, even for very simple thing like a food, you know, until you get it, you know, still there is something kind of, you know, 
you feel like you need to get that, you need to be there until you get this, there's some kind of restlessness in your mind. You know, you feel like I need to get it. I need to be there. Until you get it, there is something missing. There's something empty. There's something restless when you have that craving. And it's very simple. Attachment to food in general is not a big thing. You know, it's still attachment, but it's a small, relatively compared to many other things. But even in that, when you have that strong craving, you can see that your mind, something missing until you get it. Something missing. Your thought keep on going in that. Your mind is unable to concentrate. Your mind keep on thinking of that. You know, your mind becomes a little bit kind of restless, a little bit of kind, until you get it. And once you get it, I don't know for whatever moment, how many moments, it can give you sense of joy, satisfaction, but then it's gone. It's gone. You know, it's gone. And sometimes, maybe it makes you more disappointed. You know, you are so attached, so craving, and then you find out it wasn't, you know, too much salt, less salt, you know, too much greasy, less greasy, too much cooked, too much uncooked, you know, too much flavor or not enough flavor. A lot of time you might be disappointed. Um, instead of bringing you enjoyment, sometimes it can be disappointed. You know, and that disappointment can lead you, you know, kind of sometimes upset. You know, uh, then you started to act with the waiter, the owners, you know, that they didn't provide, you know, and you, you act, you know, so, so like that, you know. So, but even whatever you expect it exactly as you want it, still, even in that cases, you know, is momentary, that feeling of joy, is just a momentary. On the other hand, if you don't have the craving and attachment, you get the same food and you have less complaint. You enjoy it more. It might be a little bit more salt. It might be a little bit less salt. It might be a little bit more cooked, uncooked, flavor, unflavor. You still enjoy it. You know, you still enjoy it. You have less complaint. You have less dissatisfied mind. You know, um, and what play role? Even if it's the same food, it's because of craving. It, with a craving attachment, it 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 give rise to certain expectations, certain um, um, con- uh, yeah, certain expectations. You know. And that is the same, you know, whether we are, you know, watching any entertainment, whether it's a movie, whether it's a, any kind of sport, the more expectation you have, the more likely disappointed you are going to be. But if you go there without any expectation, you are going to enjoy more, whatever you are trying. You know, if there's too much expectation, even if it's good, you don't feel it didn't, it didn't fulfill your expectation, so you feel something missing, you know, it's not fully there. So that is, so that is just to give you a small example in our everyday life, you know, having less attachment or craving and grasping make our life much more, you know, much more happier and less restless and, uh, you know, um, more joyful. Um, 
and more of that make your mind your happy your uh, life and your mind more restless more unhappy more dissatisfied and so forth but especially at the time of death when we talk about a link to a link especially at the time of death you know it plays a huge role in what kind of you know what kind of next life what kind of next rebirth you have um, at the time of death your state of mind of time of death and especially that craving and grasping are the one that um, activate uh, the karmic seed, you know. So at the time of death, you feel, you know, oh, how wonderful. It would be nice to be able to fly like a bird. You might um, kind of being attached to the bird that can activate some of the karmic seed to be born in a, as an animal bird or cat, you know, or whatever other animals, you know. We, we might, at the time when we hit, we might get very attached to some of them. And that attachment and grasping can activate one of the previous karmic seed that can give birth to such existence, rebirth. Hmm? And sometimes we might feel, like, oh, it's better to be and come as a domestic cat, dog, or someone in a nice family than a, another human beings. You know, human beings and those complicating. Until you are born and then you decided that is not what I wanted. And it is too late. And don't we find that, you know, we always, even this world, you know, we find this place is horrible, not place, not good place. That part of the world, that part of the place seems much good, better. You go there and you spend there a few years or sometimes months and you see what you thought from distance was not the same. Once you are there, when you really understand what it is to be there, then you begin to see, oh, where I was before was much more better, and you want to go back there. In this life, you can come back that, fortunately, but once you are in that body, you know, I want to come back as a human beings. you don't have that easy choice, you know, um, yeah, you know, um, just like the saying, you know, the other side of the garden look green or whatever, you know, it, that is always the grass is green other side. Yeah, thank you. So that is how we always, that is very much in our life all the time, you know, a lot of time. And so same thing, because we are human beings now, we feel human beings very complicated and to be born as an animal seems to be much more easier, much more less complicated. But, you know, we are just looking from the distance. We are not in that body. We, we are not going through their mind, everything's, you know, from one point of view, from another point of view. When you talk about Dharma, the opportunity to practice the Dharma, that is a totally different area, different game, different things, you know. Um, so anyway, so I was talking about uh, craving, playing a big role in the next, in the next rebirth, next life, at the time of death. So therefore, Advice is trying to keep your mind, you know, as much as peaceful, calm, and if possible, to have a positive mind, you know, such as loving kindness, compassion, you know. Faith in Dharma, 
refuge, so forth, you know, trying to develop a positive state of mind instead of, you know, negative, where there is, you know, kind of strong anger, resentment, you know, or strong um, attachment, grasping, and so forth, you know. Um, it is very much advice to put effort not to have those state of mind and trying to have more positive mind, if not at least to have more neutral, calm mind, neutral, calm, peaceful mind. Um, when you have more kind of that kind of peaceful, calm mind and positive mind, it will activate a positive seat. When you have negative mind, it activates the negative seats, you know, um, at the time of death. So since we have all the positive seat and negative seat, what we want to activate is something positive seat, not the negative seat, you know, and depending on what state of mind we are in that moment, that can have a strong influence. It can have a strong influence. What karmic seat it can uh, activate, you know, um, and therefore, from you know the teaching on the uh, in the Buddhist teachings is you know when you visit someone who is passing or dying, you know you shouldn't show so much emotions. You know, it's not a good to show so much emotion that moment. If you show so much emotion, they become emotion, and they also start to get attached to you, and then there's then. You know, they, they, they then, you know, um, their body is ready to die, but their mind is not ready to die. Their mind is not, not letting it go, you know. So your body is, you know, kind of collapsing, deteriorating, but your mind is fighting against it, not, not flowing. And so it is a lot of struggles, a lot of struggles. It makes it much more difficult for the others, you know. Um, because when someone show attachment, your attachment also get activated, you know. Mm. So therefore, the advice would be calm, peaceful, you know. Not, not showing your attachments so that it uh, activates their attachment to analysis and, and then for them to hold on, you know, and then making it more, much more struggles, more difficult. Um, at that last transitions, you know, Instead of peaceful transitions, it becomes much more struggles and painful transitions. And not only that, you know, then also it affects the futures as well. It's not only in that moment, also in the futures. So, um, so the advice is try to be as much as calm, peaceful. You create, you, you try to create a calm, peaceful. So when they see you calm, peaceful, so they can also become calm, peaceful. You know, a lot of time, whether it's animal, whether it's a human beings, you know, we, um, I, I, I cannot remember the right word, um, Someone's emotion fools the other's emotions, you know. I don't know whether I like, let's say when you are fearful, let's say a dog sense that, okay, or any other animals, and then it makes them fearful, you know. Uh, okay, thank you. Transfer effect, effect. 
So that is what, you know, um, you sense the other's feeling and emotions, and that give rise to the similar feeling and emotions. And so if they sense you are attached to them, then your own attachment, it arises in that moment. If they sense calm, peaceful, that may also arise in their mind, calm, peaceful, instead of being, um, if you are fearful in that time of losing that person or someone, also it gives them the sense, that fear, and also from their side, it gives them the fear of losing you, you know, similarly like that. And so therefore, um, that is why uh, at the, that it is advice, the importance of when you are being around someone who is passing away, dying, whether it is animal, whether it is human beings, you know, mindful and watchful of our emotions, uh, uh, feelings, and trying to, you know, control more of that so it doesn't affect them negatively. So yeah, I think with that maybe um, yeah, with that maybe um, so we finish the link nine eight nine. Um, okay. So any questions, please. Yes. Um, uh, I'm Bill. I wasn't here last week, so I have a few questions. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, the first one is are karmic seeds permanent or are they impermanent? And then, secondly, in purification, we're trying, one of the steps is to get rid of imprints. So are imprints the same as negative karmic seeds or not? Okay. Yeah, um, whether it's positive, negative, or neutral karmic seed, they are impermanent. Nothing is permanent. They are impermanent. Um, that is why, through certain practice, purification, certain practice, why it can be, why it can be destroyed. If it's permanent, then you cannot destroy it, no matter what you do. You know. Um, so it's impermanent uh, for sure. Um, and even moment by moment, even there's a continuity of their karmic seed, but it is kind of constantly changing. You know. Let's say the, the potential in the plant, you know, even the potential is kind of, but it's constantly changing, you know, one potential to another potential like that. Um, so, um, so it definitely is impermanent. Um, and it can be destroyed, clear, and purified. Um, by different practice meditations. Um, and then, um, yeah, when we, when we use the imprint, um, and the karmic seed, sometimes it means same, you know, um, but sometimes, it doesn't mean same, so it depends on context. Um, for example, um, it is mentioned like when your eye consciousness sees certain shape, color, you know, um, whether it's a blue, whether it's a red, whether it's um, whatever color, whatever. Um, it is said that 
the caution they're able to see that whatever color, whatever is from the imprint from the past, also in that consciousness. But we don't talk about that as a karmic seat, you know, is, um, um, I don't think we will, we will say that is a karmic seat. You know, karmic seat is more to do with different experience and, uh, you know, that produce different experience in that uh, to be able to see this flower, yellow flower, as a yellow flower, when your consciousness sees it, still there's an imprint of that from the past. But um, I would, I don't, I don't think it will be. I don't think we can really say it as a karmic imprint. Susan, good morning. Um, so I fully, I feel I understand the context that we're talking about cravings in the sense that we want to purify them and not be attached. And so I understand that, what we're saying. I'm also aware of another framework that I want to mention and see what you, how you would see this. And it has to do with some kind of perspective about actually recognizing your cravings. And if they're, you know, not a negative one to try to satisfy them before your death so you don't come back because of cravings. And the example I have in my mind, and I might not have it perfectly right, but it was a story about Yogananda, and that when he died, uh, right before he died, if, I don't have it exactly right, but it was like a week before or something, he still had this craving for coconuts because from India he had wanted them and they didn't have them in the U.S. And he got a crate of coconuts from a devotee. He'd never told anyone that. And so he had his coconuts and within a day or two is when he passed. So some, you know, spiritual uh, timing came to bring him those coconuts so he wouldn't die with that craving. So I'm just curious what you think about that perspective. Thank you. Yeah, I guess it depends on individual practitioner, isn't it? If they have the, if they have the tools to let go of the craving without having to exp have, having to do that, then. But if they don't have that tools, and in in that case, that is simple, easier. You know, you can even ask. You know, even if he didn't ask, but you can ask. Is something? But we don't know what kind of craving we might have that in that point, and some of them are impossible. You know, maybe I want in that I. Have, craving to climb a Mount Everest, you know. It, it is not possible to climb Mount Everest before I'm going to die in a few seconds or a few minutes or a few hours. So I could have all kind of crazy cravings, you know. So it is not possible to accomplish that before you die. So you have to find the tools to deal with that. But is simple like as just as like that, then definitely if they don't have the tool, someone doesn't have the tool to do that, and by fulfilling that craving, then they were able to die without any other craving or that craving, then I think definitely um, we can see that as a positive, you know, in that sense. Yeah. Then we can do dedications. Is there anyone? Otherwise, we can do dedication. Yeah. The dedication from Master Shanti Deva. May all beings everywhere, plagued by no, sufferings sorry. of body and mind, obtain an ocean of happiness, happiness and joy by, by virtue of my merits. merits. May no living creature suffer, commit evil, or ever fall ill. May no one be afraid or belittled with the mind weighed down by depression. May the blind see forms and the deaf hear sounds. May those whose bodies are worn with toil be restored in finding repose. May the naked find clothing, the hungry find food. May the thirsty find water and delicious drinks. May the poor find 
those weak with sorrow find joy. May the forlorn find hope, constant happiness, and prosperity. May there be timely rains and bountiful harvests. May all medicines be effective and wholesome prayers bear fruit. May all who are sick and ill quickly be freed from their ailments. Whatever diseases there are in the world, may they never occur again. May the frightened cease to be afraid and those bound be freed. May the powerless find power and may people think of benefiting each other. For as long as space remains, for as long as sentient beings remain, until then may I too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. So thank you very much. And um, yeah, I don't know. Um, uh, I, I thought to say something about Mommy Max. At the same time, I'm not so sure. Uh, uh, because uh, I myself is kind of feel uncomfortable when people do things and say things in that, you know. So also I'm not sure whether I'm making her uncomfortable, comfortable. That is always something. It's not about what you feel. It is more about how they feel it. And so anyway, I think uh, I just wanted to, I think Mommy Max birthday is coming soon. And so we celebrate today as here. And yeah, and... Um, she was one of the main instrument in supporting the Kopan Monastery at the very beginning. And, you know, as her, her life as much as she could, she continued. And it's from the FMD, uh, Kopan where FMD started. And uh, that is why Lama gave her name, the Mummy Max, and all the monks called her Mummy Max. For them, she was like a mummy. You know, uh, and she continued to be mommy. Uh, uh, and um, again, uh, yeah, her, her, her mind has been always about supporting the Dharma and uh, organization still. Um, Sometimes we had a conflict because of that. Uh, she feel like she is useless because she cannot support the Dharma or the organizations now. Um, and I have, I have to keep her reminding, you know, that she did everything she could and just practicing her in whatever way she can now. That is, but she doesn't believe that. She feels she needs to be able to do something. And so that is in her mind, even in this time, she only thinks of helping the Dharma, helping the organizations, uh, helping others. So, and that is true sense of Dharma practice. You know, you know, even I cannot think of helping and doing that every all the time, even now. You know, so, um, so yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Mummy Max. Um, I think everyone. Thank you. Okay.